thank you for hanging in there with us. You know, this was something that Robbie and I decided we had to try and we'll get all the kinks out as we go along. It's just technology and sometimes technology loves me and sometimes it hates me, but it doesn't matter because I always do what I wanna do. So welcome to National Write Down Your Story Day. And, and the funny thing about this is that Robbie suggested this when she saw it, and she and I started talking about this whole concept of writing down a story. And wh what did you say, Robbie? You had something that you remembered, a saying that you read. I had read online somewhere that writing a story is easy. You just open a vein and bleed. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> so, so there you go, folks. That's all you have to do. Just go wherever it is and open a vein and bleed. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I don't I think it's that hard. That I've heard that too. And the, the thing is that it doesn't have to be that hard, right, Rob? It does not have to be that hard. Yeah, we, we're going to make it easier for you today. So it's Robbie Hess and Yvonne DeVita, and we're from Lipsticking, and we're talking about Write Down Your Story Day. It's a national day, but guess what? This is the first annual. Robbie found it, and when I went and looked it up, um, it was started by a YouTube artist named Mitzi. Uh, she has a YouTube channel called Mitzi TV. And I really liked what, what it said. It said, here, let me read it. She created this to provide direction and encouragement to others so they can push their work into the world where it can serve, best serve others. You know, that's what we're about pushing it into the world. We want to serve others. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to try and keep this to 30 minutes because we respect your time. It might go a little over, I don't know, um, but we're going to do our best. And we want you to ask questions. We really want you to share um, things that are holding you back from writing down your story, your stumbling blocks. But for us, we're going to share six things you should do today, today, to get started on writing down your story. Um, oh, but, but, Robbie, don't we want them to sign up for the newsletter? I was going to ask if you were going to get to that. <laughs> yeah, we have a new newsletter that's going to launch next week. It's called um, Big Idea News, because Robbie and I are the big idea facilitators. Um, and if you go over and sign up for it in the next 48 hours, you're going to get, um, you'll get a free mapping your book regardless. But if you sign up in the next 48 hours, you will also be put into a drawing for a half an hour of big idea consulting from us. And we'll put you in a drawing for a free copy of our book, which will be coming out soon. <laughs> Give them the big title, Yvonne. Oh, the title, the title, the title. <laughs> so the definitive Baby Boomers Big Idea Guide. And this is how to design and produce a brilliant second act. You know, you don't have to be a baby boomer to be a second act. Everybody can be on their <clears throat> second act. Some people, I understand, are on their third and fourth act. And that's, uh, that's over with Tom at, at Old Dog Learning and 100 Plus Life. But we want to really get to our six things. Um, and you can write these down or we will put them uh, online afterwards. Yep. So I'm going to read them off really quickly and then we're going to go through them because I, Robbie and I talked about these and I loved some of the things Robbie had to say about them. Um, have a pen or pencil ready or you can use your computer. Pick a time of day and make it sacred. Find a quiet place because solitude is your best friend. Uh, don't think, just write. Don't decide whether it's a print book or an ebook. That can come later. And then understand what a story is. So let's let's talk about those, Robbie, because when I said have a pen or pencil ready or use the computer, you had some great ideas there. Well, I know that some people that I've worked with in the past they will not start anything until they've got the perfect pen, the perfect notebook, the perfect computer screen or document. You've really just got to decide, do you think better by hand or do you think better if you're typing, sit down and just actually do it. It's very yeah. easy to procrastinate until you get the ideal pen or paper. So you just have to sit down and commit to it. 
Yeah. And then it kind of goes into our, you know, pick a time of the day. Or did you have something to say, Yvonne, about pen and paper? Um, just, you know, that I, I, I like pen and paper. I really do. Um, I like to make an outline and then go to the computer and fill it in. Mm -hmm. So again, that's me. That's me. That's how I do it. Everyone has a different way. And what, what we're trying to say is you pick the way that's really useful and good for you. And don't worry about how everybody else does it. So yeah, it does go into the time of day. Um, what were you going to say about that, Robbie? Oh, well, um, you happened to say something about an outline. So I do national novel in a month where I write a 50,000 word novel oh. in November. And we have what are called the plotters and the pantsers. So I am always a pantser. I don't have an outline. I sit down and I do my 50,000 words. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah, so you can do it, whatever works for you. You can outline it like you used to do in high school or you could just write a Word document with an outline or you can do like I do, sit down and type and cross your fingers and hope for the best. Well, and, and that, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's where we get into find a quiet place. And I say solitude is your best friend. Um, my friend, Stephen King, my friend, oh, you know, <laughs> I mean, Stephen King, everybody. So he says, you know, close the door. So wherever you're going, close the door. But the mm -hmm. reality is, um, when you, you find the place that's good for you, it could be a coffee shop. I, I don't know. I, I guess some people could go into a coffee shop where it's just, I don't know, so noisy. To me, it would be noisy. I don't think I could write in a coffee shop. I like a little background noise, but I have to turn that, even turn that off if I'm getting really creative. How about you? And I need constant background noise. Yep. See, everybody is different. Everybody <laughs> noise though, Robbie. You know, and like Tom says, starting is the most important step. And it's also the hardest step for most people because they have to get the perfect headline, the perfect story title, the perfect first sentence. It's hard to not be perfect, you know, when you're sitting down. And Chloe yeah. said she's a yeah. background yeah. noise person too. See, that's why yeah. I, love I need that noise. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I like, I like noise, but then I have to turn it off. And I've kind of gotten used to not having it because in this office, um, I just haven't turned anything on. I haven't, I haven't done any background noise. And sometimes I wish I had it, but I'm getting by okay. So, so the reality is when you find your quiet place and you pick your time of day and you have your computer or your pen and paper, that's a really great one, two, three, first step. But let's that's go back to time of day. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I think we talked about it yesterday. So some people are early birds. For me, I'm up at 5 o'clock. Between 5 and 6 a.m. are my best times. By 3 in the afternoon, my mind shuts down, and I only can do mundane tasks. So before you can pick your perfect time of day and keep it sacred, like Yvonne says, you need to know what is your perfect time of day. You know, are you better first thing in the morning? Are you better after lunch? Or maybe you're up at midnight writing because that's the only time that you have, or that's when your you know brain is working the best. So yeah, you have I, to know what your best times are and put that in your day timer or calendar and don't let anybody take that time away from you. Yeah, that goes with Stephen King's closing the door. I do think that some people who have that day job thing, they have to learn um, to find the time of day that works, that will not interfere with that day job. And so yep. like you said, maybe that's early morning, but if you're not a morning person, okay, well then do it when you first get home and don't let anyone take it away from you. That's the key is once you find the right time that works, make it sacred. That's when you're going to write. So, so let's talk then about don't think just write. Um, Here's, here's something that I, I really love because when you're composing, and by the way, Robbie, we forgot to mention that this story stuff isn't just for writing a book. Right. This could be your about page on your website. This could be something that you're going to share in a networking event. And by the way, before you go to that networking event, we want you to write down the story of you so that you're familiar with it and you're not just giving an elevator pitch. 
we'd like to throw the elevator pitch out the window, right? Right. Go on. So I'll be about your story. Yeah, so the story, um, journal it. Journal it, whether it's online or in, a, in an actual writing journal or whatever, you know, and write, 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 and don't worry about it. Go back later, later to edit or revise and definitely do that. But you could actually, from my perspective, you could write about um, the beautiful day outside your window and have that, you know, what it will do is it will spark the story of you. It will lead into the things that um, help you write that story about who you are and what you want to share with people. Because people today don't care. Robbie and I were talking about this yesterday. People don't care where you went to school. Not anymore. They want to know you. They want to make a relationship. They want to, they want to get to know you better. And journaling helps that. And by the way, when you're um, writing this story, I found, I didn't find, Tom shared with me a really great article online that I want to mention. It's um, how to tell stories that drive action. So this is a key thing. Uh, the story is about you, but it also has to be interesting to me for some reason or another. And in this article um, by Heather Ang about Cheryl, Cheryl Miller, who's a filmmaker, um, she says, use empathy, be honest and be genuine. Don't be afraid to be emotional. Mm. And the, one of the big things is understand that people have hopes, dreams, and vulnerabilities. So no, in the story about you, to relate to other people, remember their hopes, their dreams, their vulnerabilities. And, and some of the part I really loved in this article, and I'll share the link, by the way, um, later on, is that she talks about narrative. So narrative is not making a report. It's one of my pet peeves is people make a report and say, there's my story. And I'm like, no, <laughs> report here, let me help you write the story. It has to have heart and it should be visual. So there should be pictures or there should be um, language that builds pictures, which I really love. And I want to add that you should bring in personality. What do you think about bringing in personality? Now? I definitely need to, I know that you need personality, but when you were saying about hopes, dreams and vulnerabilities, so if I'm at a networking event sharing my story, my story is really about how I can help you overcome your challenges in your business, for example. And then back to what Yvonne said about personality. So had I put a little more thought into this, my personality today, I would have worn my cat ear headphones. Yes, That's I love my those. personality. <laughs> So I think your personality is, you know, do you use certain catchphrases? Is that what you're known for? Um, do you have specific turns of phrase that people go, oh my God, I know that's Yvonne speaking because I heard that word. I mean, I think you, you need to sound like you. You don't want to sound like every other writer that's out there. You don't want to go to another business page of somebody that does what you do and kind of mimic their words because that's not right. you. You have right. to learn who you are. Yeah. That was right. You can learn. That's right, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you can learn from like, I learned from the writers that I read all the time. And, and I'm learning, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm doing a video book review series about this book, um, Lipsticking, right now. And she's very big on telling your story. So I want to pause a minute because my daughter, Maggie, uh, God bless Maggie. I'm glad she's here. She says, I'm pretty sure you ladies aren't talking about the kind of writing I do as an academic. Mm. But I have to set aside a specific time and take a lot of breaks. I can't possibly sit down and write for hours and hours. I love them. So glad, Maggie, that you chimed in. This isn't necessarily about academics and about the kind of things you do. But when it comes to writing itself, absolutely. You, put, you hit the nail on the head because that's what you have to do. You have to fit it in and do it the way that works for you. Thanks for coming along, Maggie, because you know even though we aren't talking about academic writing, writing in itself, it, it can be opening a vein of bleeding, but <laughs> so let's go back and, and quickly finish here. Um, let's see, we have the, 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 the don't decide whether it's a print book or an ebook or whatever. 
Don't, don't, don't say, well, this is what this is going to be. You may have in your mind that I'm writing a, um, a business book and it's going to be my calling card. And we talk about uh, Booker's business card all the time at, at Lipsticking. Or you may um, be writing a novel, a romance novel or whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But just write it because there are a lot of different ways today that you can use that writing. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a print book at Harper Collins. And you know, Yvonne, this goes along with people who are bloggers. So every blog post that you write, you are sharing your story. And there's so many people that will turn their blogs into a book eventually. And that's mainly because they have been sharing their story all along. So now they have all of this content. Yeah, I don't think people want to. I do want to go back to the um, what you said about when you're writing, just write and don't edit. So, for example, when I do nano, you've got to write 1,667 oh. words a day. That's a lot of words of fiction when I'm not used to that. So, if I come across, if I write a sentence and I can't think of a word, I'll put in parentheses, go back and figure out what this word is. Yeah. So I could very easily go online yeah. and Google stuff and go down a rabbit hole and never get back to that. Yeah. So you really That's just need point. to write and go back and edit later. Just let your words come out. Even if, who is it, Natalie Goldberg that said the, about shitty first drafts? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think people need to understand that the first draft is that first draft. Mm. Um, here's, here's a key thing that you said, turning your blog content into a book. Even when you do that, you will make, be making revisions. So it won't be like take copying and pasting your blog. I mean, I, I think people do that. But to me, the content in your blog is so valuable. And yes, you may want to start writing it with the idea that mm -hmm. you will turn it into a book, but you're still going to edit it and revise it. So don't be afraid that people have read it on the blog, so they're not going to read it in your book. But they absolutely will buy your book. And social media marketing world... Darren Rouse was talking about his 30 days to a better blog, and it was 30 separate blog posts that people asked him to put into a book and they paid for it, even though they could have got it on the blog for free. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's valuable. The content yep. is valuable. And just remember, there's so many different ways that you can use it. And, and Robbie and I can help you because we have a lot of big ideas that we can help you um, with with your writing. And Chloe says this. <laughs> I love yeah. her. She says, um, it's part of what holding me back from writing is that she finds writing to be very difficult. She can't write for hours and hours. And so you don't have to close again. Um, you can write a paragraph if you want. I don't care. But sit down and write something. And if you want it to be online and you're going to type it out, that's great. If you want it to be in a journal um, with a pen and paper, that's great. But once you start doing it and the, the, um, the story starts to flow, you'll find it a lot easier. But first you have to start. I know it can be overwhelming. So we I also like kind of what, wind, what? I also like what Chloe said too about a friend of hers says, don't backspace yourself. In other words, just create and go back and edit later. So I like that. No, Chloe, I am not going to write for you. I will help you create, but I ain't doing the writing itself. Yeah, that's my daughter for you. So yeah, and Tom, Tom's telling Maggie that um, for your peer-reviewed article writing, peer-reviewed article writing, that's probably true. But if you want to move to write for the public, like Brene Brown or Adam Grant, this mm -hmm. stuff still applies. Well, it all applies. I mean, writing is an essential part of being a professional. So let's move on to number six, because this is a really big one. And we're, we're getting on to yep. um, 30 minutes here. And so we want you to come with an understanding of what a story is. And today, we're just going to cover three elements of what a story is, because we can't cover all of them here. And the three elements we're going to talk about for writing down your big idea, which is your story, is A, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, okay? It isn't always in that order, but mm -hmm. there is a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I do find that people don't know where the beginning is. The beginning is the hardest part. So sometimes you wanna begin with the middle and then go back to the beginning of the beginning. 
it's it's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky, but you can do that. And so that's one of the things I work on with people is that they they want it to just okay. Uh, this happened on Monday and this happened on Tuesday and this happened on Wednesday. And, you know, maybe that isn't going to give us the stuff we talked about earlier where we're understanding other people's hopes and dreams and vulnerabilities. Um, so that's... You need that's to get a, to the inciting uh, incident. I'm sorry, say it again? You need to get to the inciting incident. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, even, <laughs> even in nonfiction, Robbie. This is even a, in a blog post. Yep, even, yes. Blog post beginning, beginning, middles, and ends. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yep. that was A. So B is point of view, either first person, third person, or omniscient. I never pronounced that right, Robbie. Um, and you can be all three, but it's really tricky. It's best to pick one. Do you, what do you think about the point of view, Robbie? That's, sometimes that's tricky. You know, I kind of go back and forth, especially if you're telling a business story. It will just take something simple like your business bio. You know, do I want to say I have been a writer for the last 20 years or do you want to say Robbie has been a writer for the last 20 years? So if you say it as I, then it's letting the reader, you know, get closer to me because I am talking to them rather than having it seem like somebody is sitting over my shoulder telling my story. Exactly. So exactly. I like the first person. Uh, when I see um, about pages and it's it's the um, Robbie this and Robbie that or Yvonne this and Yvonne that, yep. and you and I have talked about how we want to start um, inserting some of the unique things like your your headset. You know, Robbie <laughs> likes to wear her cat headset, or you know, <laughs> Yvonne likes to to sit around and read all day. Um, so, so those things, those are, those are important things. And so that's the first person viewpoint. So in, mm -hmm. in a book though, you may occasionally want to use third person mm -hmm. and, um, whether it's, um, it, want to explain to them what the last one is that I have so much trouble pronouncing omniscient. Omniscient. That's what they call the God narrator who sees what everybody's doing, but isn't inside anybody's heads. So yeah, so that's the person up there telling the story. Yep. Um, so the last one, C, is voice. And we're, we're, we're back to talking about personality and we're back to talking about who are you? What is your big idea? What is your story? What is the, um, the voice that you're going to create so that people read it and know it's you? Uh, you know, it, you can get caught up in reading someone that you love, reading someone that you admire and thinking you can copy what they do, copy the way they do it. And it, it, in the beginning, a lot of us do that. We do that uh, without realizing we do it. But that's where you go back and you revise and realize, wait a minute, you know, that's not the way I would have said that. Mm -hmm. that. That isn't really me. So that's what the voice, your personal style is all about. Um, and that kind of goes along with our one of our tips with the just write. If you just sit and just write, your own voice will come out. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think you will learn your voice then. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can have a very casual voice. You can have a very businessy voice. You can have a very, um, we don't want you to have um, something without personality. We want you to bring that. Um, but that's one of the things that, again, that Robbie and I help you with. Voice, sometimes it's too casual. Sometimes you're giving away too much information. Sometimes you're um, thinking that you, some of the writing, especially in fiction, okay, but it, it does happen sometimes in business where you're writing about an incident and you're using some kind of local um, language. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's not a good idea because... Sure, the people that hang around with you understand that kind of language or the way you're writing. But what about the people, you know, across the country or the people in another um, another country? You want to be talking to everybody as much as possible. And again, that's... You want to be accessible. Yeah, and that's, that's tricky. But again, that's what Robbie and I do. We're, we're here to help you with that. So what do we want to wind up with, Robbie? You know, first of all, I would love for anybody that's watching now or will be listening later, I would love to know, like, what is the hardest thing for you when it comes to getting started? And I realize that's probably a huge question, but I'm nosy and I want to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you know, that's one of the things we did talk about, uh, the stumbling block. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I would like to know what your ideas are on your content yeah. in general. What, what would you like to do with it? Because we're all producing content. Everyone who has come today is producing content somewhere, somehow. And if you're not writing it down, today is national, write down your story day. So we want you to get started. We're gonna put our tips um, in, the, in the comment section here. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna end up today with something that we want you to think about. And I'm gonna hold this up so, you know, Words are not just letters on a page. Words have sound, words have soul, and words matter. And that's what Love Robbie it. and I are all about. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next time we decide to do this. Maybe technology will be nice to us. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter to be entered into the giveaways. Yeah, and this is, this is the map. Whoa, da, 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 da. I'll just hold that up a little. It's kind of like a checklist. So you can look at that. And it says for a book project, but it could be for your writing project also. Um, download it and use it the way that you think will yep. uh, work the best. Cool. Bye, everybody. Up time. with our technology glitches. <laughs> yeah. see, you, see you later, Rob. Bye.